Hey, this is Clayton Lawrence, the super heavyweight boxer for Team ISV, and you're listening to VIOC in action. Hi, this is Cy Thompson, laser sailor for Team ISV, and you're listening to VIOC in action. This is your high hurdle specialist, Eddie Lovett, for Team VI, and you're tuned in to VIOC in action. This is Mr. One Time for the One Time, Leon Hunt, long jump record holder for Team VI. Thank you for logging on to VIOC in action. Good afternoon and welcome to VIOC in action. This is your host at Neil Bobby Thomas and we have an awesome show here for you today. You know the shows are always better when I have a studio. Whether it be by phone or in studio, it's always a better show as we love having guests, love hearing from the officials in the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee love hearing from presidents of our federation, love hearing from the general public on some of their different events they take part in, but none more so exciting than when we have athletes who represent Team ISV in studio. And we have one such athlete today. This is Mr. One Time for the One Time, Leon Hunt, long jump record holder for Team VI. Thank you for logging on to VIOC in action. You hear that applause for Mr. One Time for the One Time. Mr. Hunt, how you doing, sir? Mr. One Time for the One Time is live in effect here today. Glad to be back home, everything, Chris. Hey, are we glad to have you home? And it's going to be mm-hmm. a campaign from now forward where we get to introduce you, present you, put you in front, put you out there so the people of the Virgin Islands could see who uh, Mr. Leon Hunt is, who has been representing the VI for quite some time now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to get you out there. Well, welcome home, as you as you've told me in previous discussions. Right. You're making a transition back to the VI. Correct, correct, correct. So just made the transition. Before you go to the transition. Before you go to the transition. Tell us who Leon Hunt is. Oh man, which which one? <laughs> hey, Leon Hunt is. We bad the... Saint John. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us a little bit about your beginnings and stuff. All right, so what's this? 2018. Mm-hmm. So 10 years ago, summer was the first um, Virgin Island trip. So that's when I first got to the team, started to represent the Virgin Islands, and the first trip that we went to Toluca, Mexico, up in the mountain for CAC games. And that was a memorable trip. That was a memorable trip. Um, remember going to the meet? I was like a s- freshman in college, <laughs> or like a like freshman going on to like a uh, sophomore. And then I found out that I actually um, jumped the measurements, the distance to actually join the team, and was um, able to go to that meet. Okay. And it literally happened almost overnight. Um, I spoke to Mr. Wallace, our general secretary for. Um, the track and field federation, like maybe on a Monday, and like by that Thursday, I was on the plane going to Mexico. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so I was ex- I was walking everything too, cause this was in the summer. And um, remember going to work on Tuesday, I was telling my boss like, yeah, man, um, uh, I think I gotta go on a trip to 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 represent my country for track and field. It's like, yeah, what would you uh, like? He said, what are you gonna be doing? I was like, really? I just don't. I really don't know. <laughs> but they said I might be going this weekend, kind of meet the starts on the weekend. Right. So I was like, yeah. So he was like, yeah, man, do whatever you gotta do. And then I remember just packing up, like I was like, packing up from Tuesday and Wednesday, but didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I get a phone call. I was like, yeah, you think you could leave out tomorrow, man? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then that's how it first started right there at that meet right there, which was. I mean, it was shocking because he was around professional. He was around the world greatest athletes, of course, in the Caribbean area, yeah. and in track and field, that's one of the best across the world. So Correct. I was like, "What? Yeah. I get to meet these people right here?" <laughs> so that was that was that was my way in right there, and I was like, "Wow!" And it just started from that day. So, so where where are you from? Where are you born? Saint Croix. Born and raised in Saint Croix. Mm-hmm. When when did you leave 
to did you relocate in the mainland after high school or while you were younger? Just just before high school. Okay. Yep. So just before high school, I went to um, the states, and I didn't. Re- I have been to the states from before, but didn't really know too much because I, I just wanted to see snow. <laughs> you know, that was, that was the whole thing is just to relocate there, see snow, playing snow, and then when the f- snow first come. I was like, wow. And then after that, I was like, whoa, that hit cold, <laughs> man. Like, cool, cool, cool. I relocate to, to New Jersey. Okay, um, Jersey. Yeah, to, to Jersey during that time. I was like, wow, this is some snow for real. Then my brother was in Virginia. He was like, nah, I mean, y'all yeah, should, uh, should, um, should come down here. So I said, all right, cool. Let me. So me and my mom and everybody, we went down there to Virginia and then pretty much stayed in. So Virginia kind of just turned my base for like the next. 15 years. So that's where you started um, your track and field in... Um, in Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Right. But I ain't even really start running track and field till literally my sophomore year in high school. And I, I, I didn't run. I just went there just to play around and check. Mm. And I went there to play around. Then I, I qualified for like a regional meet. And I was like, what? Then I was like, yeah, man, you good. You should do it. I was like, nah, man, I mean, <laughs> in this track. But I need, I need to run, um, play basketball because I love basketball because I Tim, right? So I was like, yeah, man, let me go out and play basketball. And then I just see, I was like, track too much running, man. Me and want to do no track. Then the next day I went out there again. I, had, I was like, okay, let me go out there. So this is my junior year, high school. And I went, then I went to States. And I was like, wow. Like, I actually. Keep surprising uh, yeah, yourself. Yeah, so I was like, but well, me really want to do the same, man. Me want to do the same. <laughs> then, I, then senior year, now I qualify for nationals. And then I get second place for, tra- uh, for triple jump. Okay. At the time, and then a coach from college came up to me and was like, hey, man, you trying to go to college? I was like, ah, my, you, you're going to pay for it. I mean, I was, after, high, after high school, I was just planning to get a job. Right. I wasn't even planning to go to school. And he was like, well, well, we'll talk to your coach, man. I was like, all right, cool. And then after that point, I was like, I guess I'm going to college. Then went home <laughs> and tell my mommy and tell my family and it was okay. But I didn't really know about college then, too. You know? Right. I, know. I was like, all right. So I just kind of went with the flow. From since then, which was uh, 2006, and then just just find my way. So, which college you ended up going to? Oh gosh, that's a big story there. So here, <laughs> so here the thing now, right? So the coach that recruit me, mm-hmm. here from Virginia State, right? Okay. It's in um, Petersburg, Virginia, HBCU. But the problem was, um, my paperwork got in late to go to college the fall of 06. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't able to go to school in fall of 06. I had my friend and got in school, and I was like, man. Which is why I was just working on everything. I was but like, that's, I w- that's a key story there because a lot of students uh, in high school need to know that you have to be in the NCAA clearing house yes. or whatever clearing house to make sure before you get to before, college, way everything before. is straight. Right, yeah. and I didn't know all of that. Yeah. And I was like the second person in my family to go to school, so they didn't really know either, yeah. you know? So I was just kind of going along. And re- remember, I, I won't really... Pl- it's like one day you would just plan to get a job, next day you're going to college. And I was like, what? So yeah. I was like, okay, all right. So I found I wasn't able to to, to get in that fall semester. So I was like, man, so I was kind of... Dep- not depressed, but I was vexed. Yeah. I, I was like, ah, oh, my friends, them gone. I was the only one here. <laughs> I was like, man, so what are you going to do now? But then they had a community college in in the city, which was in, in Norfolk, and it called TCC. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I going to gain college. I don't care what nobody tell I going to gain college. So I register for there, and I get straight in in like a week or two, mm-hmm. right? So I went to TCC for like uh, one semester, and then, of course, my paperwork was ready. So I, transi- I, I, I transferred from TCC, went to Virginia State. When I got there in spring semester, no, well... I wasn't I wasn't clear to run track then, so I still sit out the whole <laughs> year. So I was like, man, this man made me come to school here and I kinda run track here. But at the time in my mind I was going to school to run track, not necessarily not for the true. education. Yeah, correct. Right. So my, my, my priorities were like a little off, but I still make sure that I kept I, uh, kept up a 3.0. So I said, All right, well, let me just do the school thing, man. Then he, they was like, Well, next year, next fall, which would have been 07 fall you could be eligible to go ahead and, uh, and run. So uh, remember this 07, so this is a year before I even joined the um, Federation. Right. So happened to join, I was glad, you know, I was glad my friends knew in school and everything. I was like, yeah, why the kids? I was glad. So did the indoor for 07 and, and going on to 08, which I was already, I went to nationals. As soon as I get to um, college, I went to nationals, which was good. I placed like fifth in nationals. 
indoor and outdoor. And that was good. In what event? What discipline? This this was all in long jump. Okay. Not triple jump anymore. Right. Um, that day was just too much pounding for me, man. <laughs> but even in if, even when I was at Virginia, I did everything. The 100, 100, 110 hurdles, the 4x1, four one, the 4x4, four four, long, high jump, and triple jump. The, all those things there, but I qualify in the, long, in the um, long jump, right? So at Nationals, after Nationals 08, is when I spoke to my coach, and he was like, he from um, St. Martin. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yeah, my years guy, I used to represent my country playing basketball, and he's like, you should find out. So uh, Miss, Mr. Foy, the, he's a, um, a fireman. Right. He, my, my aunt from home getting contact with him, and he was like, yeah, yeah. So he was the one that kind of set me up, you know? He set me up and gave me in contact with Mr. Oh. Wallace, and then that's how everything happened literally over that week course mm -hmm. of everything, and that summer there. To 08, then I I was you know I was I was a high horse when I got back to school after that. So I was like, yeah, man, running for the Virgin Islands. I was great. Hey, the mom was like, oh, you think you missed a big time? Yes, same thing. I missed a big time winning anyway. So I was like, yeah, my grades good. I went in, of course. So then that's that's 08 fall no right. Then we get to 09, and then my coach had left family situation for um college. So I was like, man, like this my dude. Like he teach me all this mm -hmm. stuff in here. So I was like, well, I could do everything then. Then a new guy came in. Didn't really like what he would, he would, he would I gave him a chance, but mm -hmm. I, I had done make up my mind I want to go to Division One. Right. I was in D2. So I was like, yo, I need to go in D1 because that's where the real boss is there. Like, I need to go against <laughs> them Monday, right? So I told the coach, like, yeah, man, I ain't going to um, do no track and everything. He was like, all right, cool. So uh, one of my friends from another school, his coach had just uh, transferred from a different school in D1, which was Florida A&M. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, man, I think I can get you down here and there. So good thing with them was they didn't have a male coach yet, right? So they just had a female coach, and the female coach was just doing both programs. Right. So she had money to give. And uh, I just happened to call the right time. And she was like, yeah, he jumping what? Oh, yeah, let me come down here, man. So I ain't know nothing about Florida. And I just know it was D1. It was in Florida and next to a beach. That was a lie. That heck was up in the night. Ain't no place close to the beach. <laughs> there ain't no place close to the beach at all. So I was like, wow. Like, I should have really looked this up. But remember, I doing this here kind of by myself, yeah. right? But let me back up a little bit. So after I told, after I spoke to the guy um, at Virginia Union, which he, he was the one that came from Florida and m I was supposed to go to Illinois, um, D final line I. Mm. But the problem with that is the coach that was there, he ended up not getting, he ended up uh, resigning from his job. I went on a visit, everything, right? Mm. It was me. So here, so here the business was, <laughs> no, right? I was going there, and four of our other athletes was also going there, mm. right? So we had four athletes from the Virgin Islands also going to transfer into the same school. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, we're going to get it, our four by one together, our four by four, if I do the individual events, we're going to be good, right? So it was like, yo, the, the, uh, a lot, the, the final line nine, the Virgin Islands going to represent that whole team right there, right? Then after, that's D1 too, right? Big school, you know? Man, after the coach resigned and everything, we was, that planet went down. Yeah. And we was like, well, what are we going to do now? Cause nobody ran track the semester before that, so they could be able to transfer. Took you can't transfer, right? Back then. Right. Back so then. we was <laughs> like, all right. So everybody was like, after that didn't go to, we was like, well, what are we going to do now? So everybody just kind of just went with their own way. Own and that's how I get to go to Florida a and m And then um, did two years there, went to nationals and everything, and then um, finished out at Florida a and m And went to school again for my master's. And then that's it. Like I say, the best move you made was going to Florida a &M. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, I, that's the original hill, ain't it? Yeah. Nobody said they call itself the hill. No, the Rattlers Actually, is the original hill. When I was there is when you were born. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got time for our first break here. Now let's do our first break, and we'll be right back. We're here mm -hmm. with Leon Hunt. Having a good chat here for VIOC in action. We'll be right back.
Katie Tambaugh, Skeleton Racer for Team ISV, and you are listening to VIOC in action. Hi, this is Tim Pitts, 2004 Olympic sailor for the Virgin Islands, sailing the laser class on VIOC in action. Hi, this is Laverne Jones for Virgin Islands four-time Olympian and sixth fastest female in the 60 meter history. Tune in to VIOC in action to learn about athletes and what motivates us. Remember, teamwork make the dream work. All right, and welcome back to the show, VIOC in Action, and we're here with Leon Hunt, a long-time athlete for Team ISV, but only now we're able to drag him into the studio and get him. As you heard, he is doing a transition to move back to the territory, get things rolling. So while he's here, we can definitely make use of him. Now, Leon, we were talking earlier about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you being born in St. Croix and relocating to the States when you were 13 and all the events that led up to you going to college, eventually meeting Coach Foy and then you're getting a tie to Team ISV. And that's, that's key because a lot of people may think that you must be um, living in the Virgin Islands mm -hmm. to represent the Virgin Islands, which is not the case. Right. Because we are so small, um, facilities and training is not as plentiful as elsewhere. So it actually benefits us to be able to house people or have people represented as they are mm -hmm. uh, uh, living elsewhere. And it's no secret. It's a part of a lot of those other NOCs or National Olympic Committees for different countries that their proven ground for most of their at athletes are in the college realm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of NCAA programs you will see somebody during the school year competing for the school and then summertime representing their country. Correct. Which was uh, no different for you. So now you had that exposure. You uh, got into uh, track and field accidentally. And then the, <laughs> the success was no accident because right. the talent is real. Mm -hmm. And from there, you ended up going to your first trip to Mexico. Where else did did uh, your exploits in track and field take you? Oh, man. Whether representing Team ISV or just for college. Okay, so, wow. All right, so I always tell people track and field is similar to the military because you get to, tra uh, to travel across the world, right? Yep. And let me tell you, I've been to some places that I would not... I don't even know the airport code to the places <laughs> because I ain't even going... Ain't even at that. It's like looking at the um, travel channel... And a nice weekend, it's like, wow, it must be nice out there. Yeah. Oh, it might not be nice out there, right? So basically, okay, so let me let me see. I've, I've been literally almost every place you could think of. Well, let me see. We're going to name the city there. That guy, I can remember. We went to Toluca, that's Mexico. We went to Guadalajara, that's Mexico. Mexico City, that's Mexico. Um, we've been to Colombia a couple of times. Cali. We just came back from Bayanquila mm -hmm. um, earlier this summer. Um, we went to Bogota. We've been throughout the Caribbean. We've been to Trinidad. Well, I've been to Trinidad, um, DR, so uh, Dominican Republic. Been to St. Kitts on my own. Um, train in Antigua. Uh, we have, of course, Puerto Rico. We had a no two or three games over there in Puerto Rico. We've been to Jamaica. We love Jamaica National Championship because we get to run alongside and against Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. So that was the, one of the best one. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't run the 100, but we run the 4x1. Mm -hmm. And, hey, I mean, it was just a, a honor actually to run against this yeah, one. Like, yeah, I'm going to try to beat you in. Really. Right, <laughs> hey, let me, oh, man, let me tell you about this joke, right? Before, before we, we was in Trinidad, and... This was like 2000, I don't remember, maybe like 2012 or maybe 11 or 10. It, all, all these years mm. kind of mixed up now, right? Mm. But we was down there, right? I remember we was trying to 2000, I think of 2000, yep, 2012, right? We was trying to get our 4x1 qualify. So what happened was... Uh, we was, um, no, 2011, it don't matter, right? But 2012 or <laughs> 11, and we were running four by one, but a warm up to everything was we was going to run the 100 so we could go ahead and get our, our muscles and warm up so we could be able to run. So I remember getting into the 100, like thinking, hey, nice, you know. But I know these men fast, these men are run 99 and everything, and I ain't nothing but 10 4. 
But I said, okay, let me see how fast these man is. I met a guy named Sorello. He was in the blocks. The man said, what? Said, when the gun push out, plow, this man take two steps and we're done gone 10 meters past. <laughs> I was like, why? I done my first step, right? <laughs> two steps. I was like, wow. This man here faster. Then once we got to Jamaica that same year, because we went in Bahamas, Jamaica, Bahamas, Trinidad, and Jamaica. Um, then we got a chance to see both. And I was like, man, these guys are fast. Yeah, like, how real, are we going to Real be? speed. This is, this is like, this is, this is speed for real. So we went there, went to Russia, went to Kazan, went to Moscow, went to, 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 to Frankfurt, Germany, went to Belgium, went to Shenzhen, China, walked over, well, took a bus over to um, Hong Kong because it's different. Mm -hmm. um, been to Canada numbers of times because they got a nice circuit up there. Yeah. Been all of them, the east coast of the United States, following the south, going straight up to California, been to 37 states um, because of track and field. Right. And that was, I mean, that's almost the whole America. So 37 states there. I uh, recently went to India, not last year, but the year before that. I did, um, I, I host, a, a, um, I was coaching track and I was doing some classes for track and field over there in India for three months. And that was in Chennai. So that's Southern Southern India, which is called Tamanadu. And then I got a chance to go to Bali, mm -hmm. which is in Indonesia, all in the same thing over there. Then I went to Singapore. Singapore was nice. <laughs> Singapore, like a clean New York City. Because, mm -hmm. again, you can't spit on the ground, you know. No. You got a ticket. <laughs> can't do that. Trash have to be in there. They ain't want no spit on the ground. Government, you can get a ticket. And the ticket over there, expensive. So that was the cleanest New York. And then you, anybody been to New York? New York, dirty. Mm. But you've been to Singapore, you're like, what? This is a nice enough. So I, I've been to Greece. I went to the um, to the, the, the Academy. Yeah, the Olympic well, Academy. Right. So I went to Olympic Academy there. They're from Olympic. So I O, what's it called? IOA? Right. Yeah, the International Olympic Academy. That was great. So that's how I learned about the whole Olympic movement and everything from right. that committee there. So it, it kind of changed my whole perspective that was 2016 um the same year we went no that was toronto that was right 15 so we went to toronto in 2015 yeah, right and then veracruz was 14. Yeah, veracruz yep veracruz was 14 right. and then um before that one was maya Guez. right um but been to to greece been i went to the some of the greek islands um santorini which was the most beautiful screenshot place you could ever think of. <laughs> like that heck look, it, 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 it's so unreal that it just like, wow. It's, now I went, I didn't, yeah, I went there and I, I went there for two days, right? And Mykonos, which is the biggest, one of the, one of the best parties places that across the world in Mykonos. <laughs> them man don't, they, them man don't sleep at all over there, but that's in Mykonos and you take a little, out, you, you, you take a boat over there to Santorini, right? And Santorini just beautiful, like it's like, wow, like oh my gosh, it just gonna make you just sit there all day, so and you all you seen is like a a nice view, but the water cold, water cold, bad, right, and so it's salty. Track and field has broadened your world. Oh gosh, where 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 do you think you would have been traveling to and the places you named without track and field? Okay, so being in the states, I being in the states, I'd have probably went to New York before because everybody want to go to New York. Right. They went to Miami in spring break. The guy there. Then you know, might go Atlanta because you hear a lot of stuff on the radio about Atlanta. So you want to go to Atlanta, right? So that's West three Coast, places. Maybe. I was not a big fan of the West Coast, but then I went to LA because we had a national championship there. Um, so I went to LA, didn't really like it, but then I noticed that I was just a little bit younger then mm -hmm. and I probably want to go back again. But West Coast weren't really my thing. Then probably would have made it to Texas, but Texas so big that you'd have to figure out what what city in Texas you want to go. But they probably went to Houston because Houston again was one of NC the, the, uh, the NCs where we had the Nationals at there right. too, right? So I made it there. You'd probably not go any place in the middle because there's nothing really attracting you to go in those places. Or at right. least for me, you know, I ain't gonna watch it. There's a lot of natural life, and I was like, mm, I good man. I just want to be on the coast. So it. I went to Chicago, and um, Chicago was interesting. It was windy City, Chi Town, and um, that was it. was my favorite, but they have good, good um, deep dish pizza because that's their <laughs> thing there, and that was it. So, so like, just they, the major though. Yeah. So, 
for um, young stars nowadays, um, you have a lot of, they, they have this bad stigma in them, you know, people my age, mm -hmm. we think that all the, the kids growing up nowadays, all they want to do is pick up a device mm -hmm. and interact some way, whether okay. even if it's a game, if it's a uh, some kind of social function, right, it's, right. it's on an electronic device. We don't see them out and about. But one thing I know for sure, mm -hmm. the Virgin Islands Track and Field Federation is a solid entity. Mm -hmm. That's one of the federations that is is fighting to keep standards up. As a matter of fact, almost all of the coaches involved in track and field in the Virgin Islands mm -hmm. are qualified um, whether nationally or internationally, mm -hmm. to be able to participate in other stuff. Like in, um, let's take, for example, in, in boxing. Mm -hmm. There's probably two or three people outside of the larger islands in the Caribbean. If you're talking about the, the, the uh, Eastern Caribbean, mm -hmm. you probably got two or three coaches that could serve as a second for an international bout. Right. right. We don't have any in the Virgin Islands. And that, that, well, we, if we do, not too sure who it is. But on like track and field, mm -hmm. even at the high school level, these coaches are getting great exposure and, and great training, great connections. Like you say, we have a network in track and field in the Virgin Islands mm -hmm. that is second to none. Right. Talking about locally going from Coach Foy and the others where you could take that all the way up to nationally where we have Coach Adrian Durant, Durant. Mm -hmm. coaching at Ivy, Ivy League, League school, mm -hmm. uh, Cornell, you know. So right. track and field is solid there. What would you, um, although by for you it was by accident, how would you go about encouraging young stars mm -hmm. to get involved, you know, just be active in some kind of sport, even if it's if it's not track and field? So because we have the access to social media, right, to our advantages, we could see the world know or other sports or what other people are doing from the device in our hand all day. And then by looking at that, you might say, well, you know what? I might want to try it. It might not be available here, but then you might go to one of your school teachers them or um, your gym coach or whatever. Like, hey, you see this video here? Because stuff to go viral now. Yes. You know? So everybody does see something like, I would like to try this. Right? Maybe you didn't have an interest. The, 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 the coach didn't have an interest in it before because they, they probably didn't know. But the, 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 um, the athletes might say, I want to try this. They try this and then it looked cool because everything on the com on everything on social media look cool, <laughs> right? So if they want to try this, it look cool and the coach because most of the coaches are um, some some part of some federation or are already um, been somewhere or already on some kind of team already, right? They said, well, you know what? I think you might have the talents to actually do something like this and probably already have a federation for it, something or or some for it. But literally for the youths, them, it's actually use the social media them to actually see what else is out there that you might want to try because before it was just word of mouth. Right. And if you tell me something, you don't show me how to do it. I don't really care. But now I seen somebody do this and I could show you the proof. Now I might want to try it. So and and the people in this era are more tuned to actually correct somebody but like remember what you were telling me some years ago i don't think that was true let right. me show you where it right, was you know right, right. and then y'all could have a discussion and figure out from that point on it you know if what, what if it were true or not but the point is they have access to information from across the world so a lot of them can't really take no for answer because they could find a yes answer out there somewhere yeah. you know so yeah. yeah that's interesting to to um and i guess that's what is needed nowadays to sort of stimulate the that generation coming up um, not like most of us want to do in my generation. Mm -hmm. Not wanting to get you away from your device. Right. Somebody like you, who is just as in tune with them, will say, mm -hmm. hey, this is how best to use this device to get here. Yes. And that is a key transition that a lot of people are not um, so, so up to. Here, well, when I went to Florida, and I remember I had a one coach, right? The females coach. She had her main priority was the, the women's team. Right. The men's team, she won't, she will gain, she won't really gain. But she was, she was the head of it, but she won't really concern with it, right. right? So, I had to relay, I had to record all my practices and send it back to Coach Durant and Coach Golfing for them to help you. Out. For them to help every <laughs> practice, my teammate, I, why yo, why are you recording that, son? Why are you doing this? 
man, I got to let my coaches know what's going on, man. I was like, like, for real? I was like, yeah, like, I'm on a national. No, I, I, I challenge for the floor and I'm like big time, you know, so I got to make sure I keep up that yeah. standard of your check. So I was like, yeah, like, I'm serious into this and I make sure my grades is good. But if nobody's helping me here, I got to make sure I send this information out because they're talking to me on the phone like, hey, what do you do today? Well, let me just show you what I did today and do everything. So I record all my practices and I sent them in. So they could see, they watch mm -hmm. it. Then that's how we trained for a year. We trained for, a, I had no coach for a year. I transferred everything I going D1 big time with no coach. So my coach was on the phone or watching the stuff on, on um, camera for a whole year. Imagine that, you know? That's serious. Uh, a whole, even at practice, I could be doing stuff around the whole time, but I won't know until the next they day. Reviewed the film, you know? Man. And then when they had time to, could have regular life too. Right. So, and that's a lot of film I was sending. So, I mean... That's how it helped me out. And that's how I know that part there could help me because they wasn't there to see it. And mm -hmm. I was able to um, send it to them. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, it's, you know, it's, um, I am a true president, Angel Chico Morales of the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee and the rest of the executive uh, membership. That's, that's the basis of this radio show. We want to motivate our young athletes to get out there, get involved. But along with motivating athletes, you got to have that support system in place. Mm -hmm. We're telling you, even if you've never played marbles in your life, you have zero athletic ability, there is room for you yes. to support the athletes. Whether you're scorekeeping, whether you're um, reviewing video, whether mm -hmm. you're facilitating uh, a nutritionist, somebody who could say, well, okay, this would be a, a better diet for you, that type of stuff. Yeah. And, and there is a role for everyone and, and the Vernon's Olympic Committee. And, you know, they are so into and open to any way that could help their athletes, mm -hmm. help the federations, or help the Olympic Committee themselves. So, Correct. you know, it's a, it's a big deal out there that we get everybody involved. As, as mentioned, the Olympic Committee is in strong support of that all around. Mm -hmm. So now... You're saying you're, you're transitioning back to the Virgin Islands. Correct. Does this mean retirement from active participation? Participation. This means that I, I think it's just part of my life because the only thing I've been knowing for the last 12, 13 years is to wake up and train. <laughs> so it's like you walk for eight hours a day, right? You still have more hours in a day to do a lot of things that you want to do. So it's right. not that I, I, I can't just retire eight hour come now I'm on the ninth hour and don't do anything. Like I can just turn, I, I can't do it. I, I gonna have to do some <laughs> type of athletic thing or do it before. And I, to me, when I, when I exercise, I like to get a jump start in the morning and get my day going anyway. Mm -hmm. Or in the evening, same thing. Like I just, that's just part of my life. So it, it so training has became a lifestyle to me so a very healthy one literally right? like i mean i'm health conscious in certain things although you might see me eat a nice veggie pizza some places some <laughs> nice cheese and some smoke good on there it's like, like it's nice you know but hey i mean i'm just i'm able to do it i'm yeah. able to do it but if i wasn't able to do it because i wasn't training for so many years so that literally been part of my life is just training you know i mean i could go there right now and and, and run 100 meters right now because so you see yourself um assisting any of the programs here locally like the high school programs or junior high or anything i would try to get as involved with it as possible mm -hmm. because i don't want to step over the coaches them toes and because I, I could come into a program say yo you're doing this wrong you're doing this right this and that and i know what to do you should do this here but not nah, i know where to do it right but i do plan to be available if needed and you know so, so i could do help the kids it's the same way i did it from away I hear no to be like, yo, you got some talent, man. You could right. probably do this here or whatever. And they don't know. If they don't know anything, I get them a little information. And then we could start that movement and from there. But helping out the, the junior team, because they're our next seniors that's right. coming up, help them transition into the seniors and then going on to be a professional, that would be perfect because we have to learn all this stuff our own way. <laughs> but now you got help here on the island? Right. Great. So I'm island meaning both sides too in the territory. And that's one of our weaknesses that other islands don't have is that we got two islands. Other countries, yes, they got something got two, but their main island has the corner. Right. Yeah. 
You know, most of their people live on the main island. We got an even distribution between the two. Yeah. And that's our weakness because, I mean, man, we got lots of athletes here. But when we, it's, it's, it's hard, man. I mean, for years we've been trying to figure this out. But it, it just been there. That 40 miles a what? That ain't no joke. I t- man, that's a whole different country. <laughs> no it's joke. a different country. But it probably is a different country, but the same country. Yeah. And then when you choose an athlete, it's like, oh, man. like It's, you know, a, it's a drain on resources. You know? Could you imagine... If we had one proper facility, one coaching staff mm-hmm. that could bring all of this talent together on a regular basis, Man. put them against each other, develop them, have, Man. like you mentioned, that training program where you have juniors walking their Man. way into the senior program. Man, we would be Dude, next level. This is what other countries are doing. This is why they're so successful. This is, this, this is, I mean, it's just, it's hard. It's not, it's not saying we can't do it, you know. But we talking about like man, is it would take what to be honest, honestly, we probably can't do it. I mean me ain't gonna lie. To have two different countries like that, right? Islands, two different islands like that, trying to be on the same page when our foundation is not even fixed yet. Yeah. We gotta go back and fix the foundation, let these people know, let the coaches know like we're actually one team together. Yep. You know what I mean? We're not us against that. No. The same kid I go against the same kid in basketball here, y'all gonna be on the same national team going no, <laughs> you know. So why not? Like I would think like let the coaches like okay, well let's let's if we are gonna separate the coaches anyway from different teams, let one coach be in in in, in order of a particular area, mm-hmm. then other coach do over here, but not when one coach that oh, this is my whole team here and they're gonna do that here and do be a, yeah, that's not gonna it's work. The clash of personalities that, is definitely the problem. Then they need to go in the garbage because yeah. it, that that. that but that's help. our history, man. Our then history, history the erase problem, that history man. because if not, we're gonna keep on having the yeah, same problem, and then we we're gonna do. have then we have all the athletes. We're gonna have all the other athletes across the water who are well, coming together, right? You know, so we're gonna us. have the ones from the states. We're just gonna cop, have to keep on recruiting from the states. Yeah. And then we'll be like, well, I never heard about this guy. How they represent us? And we know about the person that been here. Well, this guy in the States, you know, he got better uh, s- uh, uh, stats and everything. Right. Here. And you like, well. Performing and it, running on a regular basis. Right, he you has know. An indoor season and an outdoor, outdoor season, season. You know, and we, we have the year-round climate to compete. But we don't. <laughs> we don't even have a, a season. It's like two or three races that's for the it. entire year for these high school students. So, and it's so and, sad. And that's one of my plans, as you said earlier, in the transition. Because I know we're going through in the next, after the Olympics, we're going through transitioning. Um, I do plan, I plan in, no, not plan. I am going to be on the administration board um, that next time around mm-hmm. after 2020. Um, so that way... I could kind of bring in like what we talked about earlier. Well, bring in the new stuff that been working for the the current era now for our athletes and everything, and try to make this stuff work. Because, I mean, if we continue the same way, we're just gonna just yeah. it just suck, you know. What and I mean? it just it just goes to show you how awesome our coaches are. If you take a college coach who has to deal with a ton of runoff students uh, every year. Yeah, you know, and Coach Durant got 100 kids. Yep, and then 100. Same thing happening on the high school level, mm-hmm. but these students have zero preparation almost. Right. You coming in and have to give them that foundation that you could call Coach Durant, hey, this a student that we have here could probably run your whole squad, so you need to Literally. give him a look. And imagine but that conversation. That's how Jamaica to do it. Imagine <laughs> that conversation could lead to one of our Virgin Islands athletes getting right. a full right yes. to a Ivy League mm. university. That's, hey, that's, let me tell you. We we are not... Uh, dude, you just hit a big topic. So what I've learned when anytime you're from the Caribbean, right? No matter what country you're in, they get some coach Somebody. abroad, <laughs> right? And they number one gateway, mm. they, they channel is to go back to the national team. Like, hey, how many kids you guys got over there? What their grades look like? Blah, blah, blah. Transition them in from the national team or high school straight across to university, yep. they're going to be international, yeah, but then you get scholarships for international, right? So they do that. They, they're already coming in better than every other, other freshman then, but then they deal with a national coach mm-hmm. that's training athlete with all the facilities in the States or wherever, or overseas, right? So they did, they train there, they get everything, then that same athlete come back around in the summer circuit where we at the end of school year, we're there in the summer circuit, get to represent the country and everything, still come back home and everything, but it keeps them, that state channel there. And Jamaica been doing it for years, but I was doing it for years. Hussein Bolt went to university in the United States? 
not that I know. He went well. He, if I'm if I'm correct, he got his um his PhD from a school in um at, at Oxford. Usain? So yeah, but he didn't need to go to school. He didn't. I ain't gonna say he didn't need to. In their society, yeah. school was just coming along as it went. Because right. me and the whole, he went from being a kid <laughs> to, to a being to, to a PhD <laughs> without any school in Long Island. Sure, he he went to UE or something. Yeah. Or they said he went to UE or whatever. Or he if he were doing classes or somebody was doing his work for he. But I don't know how you get from being being in middle school to a PhD and in between them being the top. Sprinter across the world yeah. for three or four Olympics, and I was like, yeah, "Anna, well, yeah, time for school, yeah, Jack. <laughs> Anna, Ray, maybe. Mm. Well, it's time for another break here, our final break on VIOC in action. We're talking with Leon Hunt. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Sydney Paul, member of the Virgin Islands National Bowling Team, and you're listening to VIOC in action. Hi, this is Adrian Durant, coach for the VI National Track and Field Team. Set your goals and work hard to achieve them. Believe in yourself, and anything is possible. Tune into VIOC in action to learn how you can take your game to the next level. And remember, if it's to be, it's up to me. Hi, this is uh, Peter Holmberg, silver medalist for the Virgin Islands in 1988, and you're listening to VIOC in action. This is Dr. Jerry Smith, physical therapist with the VA Olympic Committee. To unleash the elite athlete in you, the key ingredients are good nutrition, hard work, and dedication. Give yourself what you need to get in and stay in the game. Tune into VIOC in action for tips and fun activities to unleash the elite athlete in you. All right, welcome back to VIOC in action. We're here in deep discussion with Leon Hunt. We have a final segment here, about another eight minutes. Uh, we talked about your transition from the Virgin Islands to the mainland, mm -hmm. your connection and networking got you back to the VA, hooked you mm -hmm. up with VIOC, and then we discussed a lot of how uh, the programs move forward. Now, um, being that you are making a personal transition to mm -hmm. be home, um, you say you're going to go around, visit some of the university, well, the high school, I guess, mm -hmm. and see what their programs are looking like. And you know we're in a rough time because just following the storms. Correct. Uh, you have these modulars uh, taking over a uh, good portion of the school campuses. I know mm -hmm. for sure Charlotte Amalia, their uh, facility is, I guess, five or eight years from now when the modulars leave, we'll hope that they put a world-class facility there for, you know, one of the largest high schools in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. that, that school will definitely need a lot of TLC once it's done. But other than the eastern end of the island, uh, Eudora Ken has their track. Have you been to it? Yeah, that's why I trained up before you we went to um, Panams. Okay. The last Panam Games. That was my. Uh, I like it. That's a, that's a that's a IWF certified track, so we Great. can actually host IWF um, cert certified meets here in the Virgin Islands. They are trying. They are trying to get uh, to get to a point where they can host. I know when you were there last time, it was mm -hmm. just a track. And it was bush. just a truck, yeah. <laughs> truck, truck bush, and bush. And I had to buy some sun and put it in the pit. Okay. Yeah. Truck and bush. Now, I see they have some facilities. I believe they are erected some um, restroom facilities nearby. So that's mm -hmm. a good start to have those. And then uh, I think the hillside is slated for bleachers. But it, it is a, a, a really nice track. If they could get that put together, really it nice. would be key. Mm -hmm. If we could have winter events here. Yeah, let me tell you what a track open up to, right? Is that you get the track, right? Then you inside you get soccer. Right. So football. So those two sports in a hand bring in a lot, a lot of athletes and a, and a lot of um 
uh, spectators to come because these this is it we are the virgin Islands. so if you got say we do a, a a meet during the winter time well we're america so you could just come from the states you need no passport no passport you necessary. come straight down we market it nice and good now the housing wise now if the hosts are big meat because what if we get two thousand athletes here we're like oh okay well we're gonna house them you know but then we gotta make sure that the transportation is all right the safety and everything correct right? so we got all that stuff to point to but we do have a track that we could actually get some stuff going or have these um these meets um even before all that some preliminary meets weekly right to get the people in good and you just mentioned a key part of it because everyone when they talk about sports tourism they look at the game and the athletes mm -hmm. john abramson is uh, i i give him credit for bringing to me the term sports economics mm -hmm. because as you mentioned <laughs> outside of the games and the athletes you have transportation, transportation. you have housing you have mm -hmm. meals you have yes. shopping you know yeah. so you have uh, healthcare because you mm -hmm. no one is bringing world class athletes to your area mm -hmm. if you can't take care of their world class right. athletes. Let, you know, <laughs> plain and simple. You, both ain't gonna come here and just gonna ride in somebody taxi cab exactly. right there. Exactly, you, you, it has to be, you know? and we need to understand that as a community because mm -hmm. I, I always uh, from the little I trust me, my passport ain't stamp up like how yours <laughs> is, right? But in a little bit of travel that I've done, I know for sure. We treat ourselves like a Motel 6 mm -hmm. instead of a Ritz Carlton. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we, we are always seeking a bargain. We always want to, hey, you could get this four for $10. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who don't want to live in a four for $10 world. Right, right. They want one for $80. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's yeah. where we need to go. We need to stop trying to be um, a bargain basement location mm -hmm. so if we improve our infrastructure every aspect of it then you will see the willingness for mm -hmm. those major teams mm -hmm. to bring teams down here now we know tim duncan is the greatest nba I, one I of the agree. greatest that's ever, why that's why i want ever. to play ball and name run one run truck ever and even outside of that he has recognized the, his impact on the community so much so mm -hmm. that the san antonio spores Mm -hmm. trained at the UVI Sports and Fitness Center. They came from where they came from. It's a train. House that they, I, think, I believe it was one of the, the major resorts and went to practice daily. Wow. And, and that was a major statement. I don't think it's ever happened anywhere else. And that was just fantastic. That's just part of the economics of um, sports. And, you know, yeah. it, it's, uh, we, we, I think we do a disservice to ourselves. But I, my biggest push is to get more athletes keep out there keep competing you never know how far you could be never know how how, how grand you are and for recent history locally um next door we had our gold medal um brother from the bvi because um he went to the commonwealth games in australia won mm -hmm. gold and then came back and went to the csc Mm -hmm. and one goal so he's doing big things he one went to goal and set the world record in the time you hear that the time you hear that that's what we're talking about so definitely the talent is here and we can't do anything else but encourage our youngsters to get out there and get involved in sport be active and like like you said even you going to the international olympic academy we need to try and get more people to that i think they have a uh, couple people set and ready to go now and it's for youngsters it is and that's where the it'll change your mindset you know i was going in thinking one thing came out it was like <laughs> what? yeah i i would absolutely love to attend but from what i understand i'm oh, i'm too old man, <laughs> man too when old. I, if, if once i get invited back to the show i'll tell you guys more in depth about that program because yeah. Some things that, like you say, you don't really think about, and he's like, "Okay, wow. well, we'll 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 set an appointment and make mm -hmm. that happen. We're gonna have you, we're gonna have Sydney, and we're gonna have, uh, I believe, Dr. Jerry Smith also took mm -hmm. part in that, and we'll have the three of you give us a kind of a, you know, perspective on on right. what it's like to attend the International Olympic Academy. Beside it being hot <laughs> and oranges <laughs> to be good, but yeah. hot. <laughs> But, uh, you know, this is your first taste of VIOC in action. We are hoping that we can get you 
to participate more. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to try and bring in others who are deeply involved yeah. in sports, whether they're an athlete or administration, official or whatever. We want to get more people involved. Again, I am reaching out to all the federations out there. Please, please, please mm -hmm. get me your information. Send me your athletes. Send me your administrators, your officials. You know, let's get the word out about Virgin Islands athletes, Virgin Islands uh, sporting organizations, their federations, and of course, the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee. So give me a, about the next 10 seconds and wrap up and, you know, let the people know you'll be here for quite some time. All right. Once again, this is the man, Ross Books, Leon Hunt, live in a building. One time for the one time count. Cool. You can find me at the Instagram, the IG, at B17BOOKIE. Shoot me a DM. I'm going to do all the, up, the uploads on this, show you guys presently what's going on currently. And then we're going to be VIOC in action. That's right. VIOC in action. And you can give us a, uh, send us an email at NOC at Virgin Islands Olympics dot org. Uh, you can always give us a call at 719-8462 or just check out our website, virginislandsolympics.org. But before we go, this has been at Neil Bobby Thomas, and I have a few more people who would like to give you their thanks. Hey, this is Lynn Reed, Secretary General of the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee. Wanted to thank you for listening to VIOC in action. This is Angel Chico Morales, President of the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee. Thanking you for joining us on BIOC in action.